Hello, I'm Tim Dunn and today I am being sent on a mission by Network Rail to leave my home here in central London and head north to a wonderful city full of fascinating railway heritage. It's Newcastle. By 1860, the Tyne had become the focal point of the golden age of coal, iron and steam, thanks partly to the growth of the railway. Newcastle Central Station is a, a, a fantastic celebration, really, of the power of the railways coming together in a fantastic cosmopolitan city like Newcastle in the 19th century. Um, it was the centre of the railway industry at that time, um, and it just really shows off that huge civic pride that the, that the city had in, in its connections with the railway. Designed by John Dobson for the York, Newcastle and Berwick Railway Company, it includes Tuscan-style columns in the booking hall and stunning wall tiling in the former refreshment room. Now I'm back out of the railway station to see just how massive this place actually is. Newcastle Central Station starts all the way down there, down past the hotel, all the way up here, along this classical facade, right up to the end of the street here too. Now, right in the middle of this almost symmetric facade is this, a port cochere. Now, a port cochere is where taxis or carriages used to pull into the railway station to pick up or drop off their passengers. Now, once upon a time, these ends were completely open to the elements, as were the arches there as well. But in recent years, Network Rail and LNER have gone in and actually glassed up the whole interior, which means the interior is now, quite usefully in Newcastle weathers, really quite warm and dry and there's a cafe and a bar in there too. It's this kind of thing that I really enjoy at railway stations around the country. It's their constant re-evolution and change and made useful for new audiences and new users. Let's go look a little bit closer at the works. The Stevenson's achievements in these works and Rocket's proof that steam-powered locomotives were better at pulling trains than horses or stationary winding engines led to railways cropping up in continental Europe and the Americas within just a few decades. The Stevensons didn't just have a loco works here. They were responsible for some of Newcastle's greatest pieces of engineering, including the high-level bridge. I asked Vicky Stretch, Network Rail's archivist, all about it. So the high-level bridge at Newcastle provided a really vital step forward in a continuous north, south, east coast mainline. And it also provided the authorities in Newcastle with a, a, a mechanism, really, to build a much needed bridge that connected Newcastle and Gateshead by road. Um, so the Newcastle and Berwick Railway got permission to build the bridge um, that were to build their line in 1845 and the condition was that they built their bridge over the time within four years. So to avoid it being hugely expensive they decided rather than put the railway and the road side by side they decided to build a double-decker bridge with the railroad on the top and the carriage road as they called it on the bottom. Um, it was designed by Robert Stevenson. So the bridge opened in August 1849 by Queen Victoria to much public celebration in both Newcastle and Gateshead. And in fact, Queen Victoria's train stopped in the middle of the bridge and she officially opened it in the middle um, at the summit, as they called it at the time of the, of the high level bridge. So we have some amazing drawings of the high level bridge um, in the Network Rail archive. We have a set of contract drawings that are signed by the contractors and the railway companies involved. And they, they essentially display the design of the bridge and how it is going to be constructed. We have some fantastic general arrangements that actually show how the bridge is going to look. And if you put those side by side with photographs, they are, they are you know, fantastic watercolor pictures um, of the bridge that look exactly as it's executed, as, it, as you see it today. Yeah, and we have some amazing drawings that show the design of what they call the railroad and the carriage road underneath it, um, and, and the footpaths that take the pedestrians on either side of the, of the, of the carriage road. So, um, yeah, I think they're my favourite drawings, really, of the high-level bridge, just because of the terminology. We're so used to calling it the railway now, and we associate the railroad with being an American, an American term for the railway. Um, but it, quite clearly on these drawings, it refers to it as the railroad and the carriage road underneath. 
I do hope you've enjoyed our trip around Newcastle Central Station today because I've really enjoyed coming back and I urge you if you're ever in the area do stop off and take in some of those finer details and just explore it for yourself it really is worth it this station has had a fantastic history in fact this whole area has a wonderful railway heritage and actually it's got a great history ahead of it